Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome to the video. So in this one I want to talk about the weighing scales and why you shouldn't become so heavily invested in the number between your toes when you are trying to lose weight. So typically when we are dieting and trying to lose a little fat, like we depend on the scales to tell us how well we are doing. So, you know, if it's up a pound from yesterday or if it hasn't budged in a few days, we become disheartened, especially, you know, if we've been strict on ourselves and doing everything right with regards to fat loss. But it's important to know that the weighing scales cannot differentiate between the different elements of your body. So, you know, when you step on the scales, that reading doesn't just, you know, specify the fat you are storing it is a collective reading of all the different elements of your body so things like muscles bones organs fluid in your body are all taken into account as well so you know it really isn't necessary to rely on the weighing scales alone to tell us like how well we are doing or use it as an indicator for fat loss because it encompasses so much more than the fat we store. So let's go through an example to demonstrate how misleading the scales can be. So let's just say you weighed yourself this morning and the last time you weighed yourself was three mornings ago. So in that space of time you have been exercising hard, you've been eating in a calorie deficit which basically means you've been eating less food and you know you've just been really strict on yourself. But for some reason the scales is slightly up today and you're just like what the hell how is the scales up I've been doing so well I've been doing everything right I hate my life right now but the truth is you haven't actually gained any fat so the explanation is often something to do with your body storing more water than it was the previous day and water retention can happen for like a variety of reasons. So it can happen if you eat a meal high in salt. It can happen if you're just more hydrated. You've been drinking more water. It can happen if you're feeling stressed. It can happen if you get a bad sleep. It can happen if you're a girl and you're approaching your time of month. So there are literally so many reasons why your body could be storing a little more water and hence the reading on the scales will be heavier as a result. So you know, if the scales is up within the space of a few days and you just know that you've been doing everything right with regards to training and nutrition then don't worry about it it's probably just water retention and that is only very temporary and let's do another example so let's just say that you have been like training really hard in the gym for the last couple of months and eating in a calorie deficit with the aim to lose fat but you know you're starting to become a little disheartened because in that space of time uh, you've lost four pounds and you know you're okay with that it's fine but you feel that you've been working like really really hard and four pounds just you know doesn't reflect the effort you've been putting in but you need to remember that the scales takes muscle into account as well so in the space of a couple of months you may have gained three pounds of muscle as well as losing fat so the truth is you might actually be down seven pounds of fat but since you've gained three pounds of muscle the scales is only telling you there's a four pound difference whereas in reality like a lot more has happened than that so what do we do like completely disregard the scales throw it in a bin no, we don't do that. Whilst remaining cautious, it's still perfectly fine to use the weighing scales to monitor your progress. And you know, there's a couple of things you can do to improve its reliability. So the first thing you should do is when you are weighing yourself, weigh yourself at the same time. So I like to weigh myself in the morning when I wake up, after I go to the bathroom, but before I eat or drink. And weighing yourself at the same time is important because your weight changes based on what and how much you eat or drink. So weighing yourself on an empty stomach each time is going to increase the reading's reliability. Secondly, I recommend weighing yourself at least a few times per week and I recommend this because as we know the weighing scales can fluctuate big time and the more readings we have you know the better idea we have of what's going on with regards to our weight so for example the scales might be going up and down throughout the week but when you look back over the past few weeks even though you'll see like lots of fluctuations you'll see that there's a downwards trend overall and this kind of change is harder to see if you know you're only weighing yourself once per week for example the final thing you should do is use other tools as well as the weighing scales to monitor your weight loss. So things like progress pictures, body measurements, how you look in the mirror, how you feel in clothes, 
how you feel in general are all useful things and you should at least be using like a few of them together to judge how you are getting on as opposed to using just one in isolation. Anyways guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. I hope it made you realize that the weighing scales isn't the be all and end all of weight loss and there are plenty of other factors to consider. So thank you for watching. Make sure you smash the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already because I'll be rolling out plenty of more videos over the next few weeks and I will see you in the next one.